they set the pre-sale price at? Well, they say estimate on request. So once you start talking to them, you learn more than $80 million, which could then soar above 100 if it goes the way they're hoping. And is that a record, just that price in itself for a pre-sale price? Well, Sotheby's has never announced and or made public an estimate of that of that uh, stature. So yeah, that in and of itself is a new benchmark for Sotheby's. And whether it can achieve that, I, everyone's going to be watching next week. So this is this 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 painting has been. Is, it's a painting. Uh, is that the, uh, it's no, technically it's a pastel. A pastel. This pastel has been on a sort of whirlwind tour. It is one of. Is it four of the screams that were done? Tell us about the artist. People don't. People know the scream. They don't necessarily know the artist. Well, that's the interesting thing in the wild card in this auction because. The painting is much more, well, the picture is much more famous than the artist himself. And he was very tortured and always worried that he himself was going to go crazy because of a history of mental illness in his family. And this painting really brings that angst to life. And that's why it's become such a pop culture icon in and of itself. And we've seen it in movies. I mean, I think uh, in the Home Alone yeah. movie, the main character, he's sort of like doing that pose yeah. as a scream. Uh, uh, Homer Simpson does it. We've yeah. seen it. Uh, there he is right there doing it. That's such a famous, a famous shot. Mm -hmm. uh, who can forget? I mean, Homer Simpson did it as well. What is it about the scream? You know, you've talked to so many people for this piece. It's a great piece you've written, and I'm glad I got a chance to read it early. What is it they say that the scream taps into in us? Why are we all so drawn to this? Well, I think, you know, it, it, very, very early on, he knew how to market this painting. He created a mass production in lithographs for the time, and it was then created, it picked up in magazines. So from the start, he was savvy, and he understood how to get this image out there, because it hit a chord. There's something about the terror inside right. uh, human existence right. that it seems to tap into. But then the more pop culture kind of ran with it, it's just become almost a parody in some cases, which um, can, can be good and bad for people exactly. who want to buy it. Exactly. And, and people aren't even sure. I found this fascinating that this, many people think that the scream is screaming, but some people think that the scream figure is covering up their ears to not hear screaming. Explain where that comes from. Art historians disagree about this, but I thought that was interesting too. That he wrote, Monk wrote a poem a year before he did the first version of this work. And he said that he was walking at that spot along this fjord in Oslo where he was overwhelmed with anxiety. He heard the scream, the piercing, unending scream through nature. And so it was the screams around him that he, now historians will say there was a slaughterhouse nearby, there was an insane asylum nearby right. where Monk's sister was housed at the time he did the first work. So there are reasons that he might have been hearing screams around him, which is where that theory comes from. And Monk, his first name, it's, you pronounce it Edvard, is Edward that right? Monk. And in, we've, you've sort of drummed up some of who some of the potential buyers may be. Walk us through a couple of those folks. Well, you, you get into this and, and you hear the phrase, the usual suspects. It seems to be more uh, some of the people who are the trophy hunters out there. Um, the oil, uh, the, the, the sheiks in the Middle East, and the Russian industrialists, and the big money in China, and the established um, big game hunters in, in the U.S. who are going after these major, major masterpieces rather than people who are super into Monk himself. Right. Or Norwegians for that matter. There is not that much gigantic wealth. In, I mean, there are, there are people in Norway who could afford it, but it's not generally assume that the person will be from Norway. And, um, and, and there was some fear very quickly about whether this, 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 this pastel would be stolen before it ever got to auction. Is that, I mean, if, is, is this, this piece more likely to be stolen than others? I mean, why this great fear for the scream? Well, it's been two other versions of it were stolen in 1994 and in 2004. So it, it really does have this history and the security is tight around it. Um, both times that it was stolen, it was returned, um, but it does make, it adds to the backstory of this painting, of this picture, which is another potential selling point yeah. for it.